Um, I'll call David Shearer. Mr Chair, uh, this, uh, this bill is, uh, is opposed by, uh, by Labor because actually it's trying to fix something which is in fact not broken. Um, we actually have a very effective system of being able to protect the, the rights of people in New Zealand who obviously and very frequently don't get a voice. And for many of those people, that, that voice is going to be ta either taken away or downgraded to the point where it's not going to be able to be effective. Um, I, we do agree with the idea of a, of a commissioner that would protect the rights of dis uh, people with disability. Um, that is something that is long overdue. We signed that convention in the UN, I think it was in 2008, um, and this gives it weight and it gives it an, an, a, me a means of being able to be carried through and, and, su and supported. But what we don't and cannot accept is that with this legislation, as I say, really not fixing anything because I don't believe anything is broken, and I, and I, I really question the underlying motives of why this legislation has come into being. Why we, why we do need to take away the specific roles of the Commissioner for Equal Op uh, of Employment, which is currently Jackie Blue, um, and of Race Relations, which is uh, currently held by Susan Devoy. Now, just simply by looking at the number of times that those people appear in the media, and I know that's not a particularly good uh, measure, but they are the people who are standing up for many of the, of the issues that are facing us today. So we look at equal, equal employment. Equal, do we have equal op uh, employment opportunities in New Zealand? Of course we don't. And we, we've, we've, looked at, I mean, we've, we've looked at the number of times that, for example, women are not represented well, that they are, they're, their salaries are not um, in, in comparable jobs, uh, are not equal. There is a very real need for ensuring that that particular commissioner stays there, if only for that simple reason, to provide the focus of work and attention on, on those issues. They are real issues in New Zealand that are certainly not being addressed. And in fact, in many, uh, much of the statistics, statistics were actually going backwards uh, and not forwards. Likewise, in race, race relations, why would we want to disestablish this particular role in New Zealand at a time where, for example, the city that I come from, Auckland, is the second most diverse city in the world. This, there is a need for looking at the opportunities, the rights, uh, the way that people are treated in our society with regard to uh, what kind of ethnicity, what background they, they hold, and to make sure that somebody is specifically standing up for them and protecting their rights and making sure that they get a fair go. This has been long standing in New Zealand. We've had a race uh, relations uh, commissioner for a very long, for a very long time, and this government wants to disestablish it. Sir, this is a lessening and a weakening of our system of rights in New Zealand, and it's for that reason. Uh, that we are, um, we're, we are opposing uh, this legislation. That's the first, perhaps the first uh, reason. Second issue is the independence and the operations of this office as well. Uh, I was um, unfortunately happened to be in the select committee that was looking into the GCSB operations in 2013, and I heard John Key when the Human Rights Commissioner came before, the, uh, before our select committee, and John Key clearly didn't agree with the, uh, the findings of the Human Rights Commissioner, and he said that the Human Rights Commission needed to pull its socks up, inferring that it was going to lose its, its money of 9.3 million that it, was, uh, that it, was, had, it gets given every year in order to do its job effectively. That's the the really scary, frightening aspect of putting an office like that too closely uh, in sync with the government. And what this bill will do, sir, is ensure that the, that, the, that the office itself will have to pass its work programs in front of the minister.
Now, the minister might be a very honourable person, uh, but I don't believe, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Chair, David Chair. Chair, I don't believe that that is a healthy uh, situation for our for our parliament, uh, for our society to ensure to to have a situation where the uh, where the commissioners need to pass their work past a minister. There should be a complete separation. And there should be no threats being able to be levelled at one of those commissioners by the Prime Minister or whoever. We might have good ministers now, but, we come, but ministers, like all people, come under enormous amounts of stress. Their, their, uh, their situation is, is criticised and their first, uh, perhaps one of their first reactions is to say, is to attack back at, a, at, a, at a, uh, uh, the independence and the ability of these people to be able to do their jobs. Sir, so, the third issue is we have, and we, this move threatens what we believe is international minimum standards. Uh, it has been criticised by the UN's Office for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, with particular emphasis uh, to the to the uh, abolition of the Race Relations Commissioner. The move down this track does nothing for the reputation of New Zealand yeah, internationally. Yeah. Yeah. It does a lot of harm to it. It's not just a re-juggling, a, 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 uh, a change that is supposed to make this more effective. It's actually, in some ways, go is going to uh, bring, to, 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 to bring some discredit to, to New Zealand in terms of the way it's going. To, way it's going. So, sir, there, there, these are three very, I think, very powerful reasons why we don't need to change this piece of legislation. I, I have yet to see and have yet to hear a rational, strong argument by the minister and those who are in support of this bill for why this bill needs to go through. It's taken a year to get from uh, where it was last read to, to now, so it's not exactly urgent anyway. But irrespective of, of, of that, I don't see the reason why we are spending valuable parliamentary time on a bill that doesn't purport to do anything that is re going to be remotely positive. In fact, it's going to take away, as I say, the focus on critical areas and critically weakened areas within our society that need to be stood up for um, and supported. So, sir, I, we, we, we agree with the, with the uh, introduction of a, of a disability, uh, uh, disab disability commissioner and support that inclusion. But, sir, taking away the equal, op equal uh, employment uh, commissioner in the form of the, the current holder of that, Jackie Blue, actually a former, um, former national MP, who has come out to her, uh, her credit and criticised this government. Um, she hasn't, she hasn't uh, stood back and, and, and withheld her criticism. She's been, a, a very, I believe, a very effective commissioner. The Race Relations Commissioner, again, appointed by this government, uh, Susan, in the person of Susan Devoy, who was actually highly criti uh, criticised when she got the job. People said, why has, she, uh, why has she got the job? I think she's done a very credible job. And she's actually stood up for and done what we expected her to do, was to stand up. And, and uh, sometimes I didn't always agree with her, but I have to say she's uh, tried to act as independently as, as possible. But the fact that those two people can do that speaks volumes about why we need to have those people uh, in, uh, in our society and, 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 and part of, our, uh, our, of the structure of our, um, our institutions. Take those away and we lose something. We lose, those people who might be supported by those very institutions lose an advocate, and that's important. Secondly, as I said before, it threatens the independence of these organisations, of, the, of these groups, are being threatened by the fact that their work programme and the ministerial uh, over, oversight is so strong that will, it will influence the way that they are able to operate independently. I think that is such a backward step. Um, and, you know, this government calls used to call the, the former Labor government nanny state. This is, this is, actually, this is actually more than that. This is, this is about a, a steel grip 
around our independent organisations and pushing them in the direction that the government wants to, wants to go. And thirdly, sir, I don't believe that it actually helps our international standing uh, in the world when we sign up for these, in, the, these agreements. Oh, the Honourable Amy Adams. Oh, Mr Chairman, thank you.